This is Abe Friedtanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Yvonne Strahovski about The Handmaid's Tale. How are you, Yvonne? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. I've I think loved is the wrong word, but I've it's been interesting watching this character over the course of five seasons on this show, just because she's so detestable in so many ways, but there's also so much to relate to about her in a very strange way. What has it been like to, you know, play the evolution of that character? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, rewarding is the word that comes to mind. It, it's just a treat. I mean, I, I really, I get to go to work and just, it, it feels like I have so many options in terms of how to play a scene. The scenes just feel so ripe with um many layers that it's just so easy to sink your teeth into it and 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 just play I, I mean it's the joy uh pun wasn't intended but that's funny um it's it is really the joy of going to work and just being able to play and know that I have that opportunity to to dive into this very kind of complicated character Season five definitely finds her in a very different uh, situation, just power wise. She's alone and everything. What has it been like doing it without having Fred there? Oh, <laughs> you know, I was, I'm, I mean, it's sad. I, I really felt the absence of um, my friend Joe, <laughs> who, who plays Commander Waterford. Um, you know, off screen, we're much nicer people. And, and Joe is, is is a very exceptionally lovely human being. So um, on that front, I did feel the loss, um, you know. Uh, but it, it's been interesting just, you know, in terms of Serena as a character, having to navigate the world without Commander Waterford and and what that means and and she really was faltering for a while there I mean she you know kind of lost everything and didn't have anywhere to go and in the midst of having lost everything she's suddenly birthing the thing that she's always wanted so that juxtaposition uh is kind of incredible to watch you remember how long ago you learned about that uh, impending development with her pregnancy? How long ago I learned about it? At one point in the process of making the show, like was that long before that was ever a storyline on the show? Oh, that I knew she was going to be pregnant? Um, yeah. Gosh, no, I can't remember. I mean, I think I kind of assumed, you know, <laughs> one way or another, maybe that would happen to her. Um, it, it is, I mean... Obviously, we saw that in season five, but it does pose a lot of really interesting circumstances for Serena, you know, in terms of watching her have this baby taken away and, you know, her se separated from the child and what that means. And it's also really gratifying for the audiences to watch who want to see Serena get what she deserves, ultimately, I think, you know, she's an interesting character, but and I think people like watching you know what she's up to and her manipulations but I think ultimately it is really rewarding for people watching to see her get what she's dished out in the past what's always intrigued me most about her is that she had like she wanted this she wanted this conservative society and then she's seen how she doesn't actually have the same role that she'd like to have. She wants to be an ambassador, you know, for Gilead. She would love to be a speaker to inspire other women to her way of life. And then, of course, that's just not what's what's happened. How do you manage that sort of balance of disappointment with still having some sort of faith? Uh, faith in the system or the things that she believes in? Or th yeah, theoretically, with the things she believes in, you know, God and all that, but just that it hasn't. How do you tap into that? What, what's what, what is that like? I mean, truly, I think really everything about her is survival. I don't, I don't, I think the fact that everything is about survival very much clouds what she is genuinely thinking and feeling. I think there's a lot of, um, acting out of emotion which is so heightened because you're in survival mode and I've kind of said this from the very beginning that most all of these characters in in the Gilead setting are in survival mode so everything you do is heightened everything that you're worried about everything that triggers you every trauma that you go through it's just 
it, it, you can't make a move without um without it, the stakes being so high uh and i you know from the very beginning i thought serena while at the top of kind of near the top of the food chain in gilead i still think you know she's in survival mode she's got to get through what she set up for herself and and all the things that she's in, endured in her own way as well um yeah it's also been fascinating watching her with the wheeler family since they're in survival mode in a different way because they're not they're not living in gilead they want to live in gilead but they're like in an outpost uh what is it like working with with genevieve and just uh you know working on that whole dynamic I loved the Wheelers. I thought they, you know, I thought the Wheeler episodes directed by Eva, who I thought she really brought back the original creep factor of the show. You know, we when we first, you know, in the pilot episodes and, and, and the episodes following, there was just something, you just felt so uneasy watching a show. And I really thought that having the Wheelers come in uh, really brought that back because you know now suddenly you find Serena in this position where she's suddenly navigating this total unease and not knowing and lo and behold you know it's her child her it's, you know being separated from her child is exactly what's at stake yeah which is what we saw June go through so um I, I just I, I loved it I loved that I loved how different they were I also I loved that Mrs Wheeler was really you know, a big smile and kind of had a lot, a lot of energy. And then Mr. Wheeler was very quietly intense and very creepy in that way. I mean, they, it's a credit to both of them. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that entire storyline. And what is your working process like with Elizabeth Moss? I'm sure you get along in real life, but you have to, you know, show this real animosity and hatred of each other on screen. I, you know, I think we both really love to play in the scenes I think uh there's just such a fun release that happens when someone calls action and you know you can do whatever you want and you know the other your fellow actor is going to also do whatever they want and something cool is going to happen you know there's some kind of fireworks so I, I love also the fact that you know in in playing so much we love to try different versions of things as well and we talk about them you know we've always done that we've always sort of said oh what if we you know what if we don't get so you know loud here and, and sort of bring it back down and what if it's actually quite quiet in this moment or what if we do this or what if we flip it and I, it's such a fun thing as a performer you know to be able to explore that and discover all these new things in the scene but it's also must be really cool for the editors to be, <laughs> to sort of get the different versions and then in the edit you can you can piece together um the scene you know in a way the season five finale was very memorable and had just so much going on it's the kind of thing where if you turned it off a minute early you'd be very satisfied there's so much happening but you'd miss that very i hope no one does that but you'd miss that very you know last uh, scene, you know, where uh, you ask uh, if if she has a diaper, which I just think is like such, it's so out of tone with the show in so many ways, but so much about, as you said, like survival mode and just accepting the reality of it all. You know, that diaper line, I, I really wasn't sure about that diaper line for the for, forever. And I, I still am not. I remember talking about it with Lizzie and I don't think she was sure about the diaper line either, that we actually shot, uh, a lot of different versions of the ending without the diaper line. So we we did versions where we just looked at each other and we didn't say anything at all. And then we did versions where I said, June, and she said, Serena, and that was it. And then of course we did do the diaper line, which ended up in the in the cut. So, but I, I guess it's funny I, from hearing feedback, so many people love the diaper line. It was kind of a hit, I think. <laughs> So kudos to Bruce. Well, there's just certain moments like that. I'm also, I'm from Massachusetts. And so there was some point where like at the beginning of the show, they were talking about brunch places, like in, in, in cities and towns that are near where I grew up. And so it's always strange to be reminded that like this is not hopefully it's very far away from our real world, but like it still is tied into some things and we would still 
act the same way, even if people were telling us to do something differently, it doesn't change people's personalities all that much. And so I, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely brings us down into reality. Have you uh, gotten any other very surprising reactions to Serena over the course of the show? Um, you know, I mean, I think mostly I've been surprised by people running into fans of the show um, or getting recognized, you know, as Serena in the show and kind of thinking, oh, God, like, I, you know, are people going to hate me, the person, you know, and, and think that I'm the her or, I mean, I am her, but, you know, I'm not. So it's, I think how, you know, what I'm trying to say is people have been so lovely and <laughs> that has been a little bit surprising because I, I don't know why, but I think I kind of expected people to not be so nice after watching um, Serena Joy be Serena Joy. We're going into the final season now. How are you feeling about bringing this character in the show to a close? I'm, I think I'm excited. You know, I, this, uh, it's just been really rewarding to, to have gotten to play this kind of a role. And um, I am excited for what's to come in the season. Um, and to finish it off with a bang, you know, I, I, it's nice to be able to come to an end and, and put that bow around it, you know, and it's not going to drag on for an eternity. And, you know, it, it's, it's uh, however compact it is, it's the six seasons and it's, it's a, it's the healthy way to go. I think, you know, make it six and then we're done and go out with a bang and hopefully everyone loves the ending. Well, without giving anything away, is there anything that you can preview about what we might expect from Serena going forward? What you'd, what you'd like people to see from Serena going forward? Um, I think in the past season, it was just so rewarding and exciting to watch her uh, struggle with the things that she's put people through. Um, so I kind of feel like there should be a bit more of that kind of maybe in a more explosive manner um I don't know I, I I maybe it's a bit too on the nose but it's also kind of what I feel like people want to see happen to her you know um I'm sure the writers will come up with something very um creative and, and surprising they always you know I'm always surprised I, I read the scripts and I'm like oh okay that's good didn't see that coming you know so Sounds good. I I remember watching you long before this role on a uh, much more, uh, you know, automatically endearing uh, show, and that was on Chuck. Um, and I know that my wife would be upset if I didn't uh, mention that she quoted um, a line from the show in our wedding vows, because she's a very, very big fan. It's like about like the brushing teeth, you know, tandem style and all that. Um, do you still have, you know, do people still recognize you from Chuck? Do you have fond memories of, of that show? Oh yeah, I get yeah. People, uh, people loved the show, Chuck. I mean, it was um, it was my first gig. I I have, uh, it was it, so many things. I have so many feelings about about that show. It was five years of my life. It was my first time working on anything here in the states, um, and it was a massive learning experience and learning about the industry and yeah just starting my life here it was it's very much tied into kind of getting thrown into this new life that I didn't plan for at all and coming here to the states and now here I, you know it's been what 16 17 years and it's my home now I just you know I didn't that wasn't a, a plan that I had so it's very much the memory of Chuck is very much tied into kind of the, you know how I ended up coming to live here you know it's my call of my home and I think it would be a it's a very jarring sort of switch from uh Chuck to the Handmaid's Tale and so I'm glad to have seen you on Dexter in between because I feel like that's that's like the transition kind of role where you know it's somebody who does bad things but is a good person and you can still sort of uh like her I know that you know there are some plans to bring Dexter back in different forms do you feel like 
you've done what you wanted to do with Hannah or would you be open to the idea of, of coming back in some form to tell more story there? No, I didn't even realize there was more uh, talk of, um, I haven't even thought about that. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. That would be really interesting. She was a fun, fun character. It definitely was um, an, an in-between thing. I will say it was, um, it was really important to me to uh, figure out how to find my way into material like The Handmaid's Tale coming off of Chuck. You know, it's, I think it, any actor sort of deals with that situation where you're known for something at some point in your life. And then if you want to steer the ship in a different direction, it can be very tricky. Um, and it requires a big leap of faith sometimes and saying no and not knowing what's on the other side of that. No, if you're going to get an opportunity on the other end of it. Um, so it was really important to me to, you know, that transitional role, Dexter, and, you know, whatever else happened there to kind of get me here. Um, it certainly wasn't by accident. It was definitely uh, somewhat by design. Well, if there are people who have seen you on any of these three shows and want to check out something either totally different or just something that means a lot to you, what would you recommend from your uh, from your work? You know, I think, well, they're definitely The Handmaid's Tale. I mean, it's, it's just such a magnificent character that I've been very grateful to, to you know, have the privilege to play. Um, you know, Stateless on Netflix art yeah. series was also very, very meaningful to me. Um, also a, a kind of politically themed, um, but just also quite d a demanding character and um in, in 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 a different kind of energy she has a different kind of energy and um that was a very very special project for me um so yeah i would say i would say those two and do you hope to have more roles in the future where you can use your natural accent or do you like playing americans all the time ah uh, you know <laughs> i yeah i i'm so used to playing American um you know I got to the point where it felt awkward to do this my natural accent um because it felt like it was more effort uh also my accent seems so muddled now you know it's par for the course you live in a country for that many years you're going and all and when you're pretending to be American for your whole life um as in your whole adult life I should say um it really does end up messing with, you know, how you really sound. So I do have, I think I'm having, or I'm just constantly in a, like a vocal identity crisis of um, who am I? <laughs> you know, plus my family's Polish. So I speak Polish to my kids. That kind of messes it all up too. So, you know, I don't think I answered your question, but <laughs> no, no, you did, you did it. But I'm sure a lot of people who tune into this interview will be very surprised as soon as they hear you speak. So that's always, always fun. But it's, it's a pleasure to get to speak with you and to review all these roles. And I wish you plenty of success with The Handmaid's Tale Season 6 and whatever comes after. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate your time.